I'm Forrest Frosty Crummel, the interim pastor, transitional pastor at St. Paul United Church of Christ in Pekin, Illinois. We're glad that you could join us in this virtual worship service. It is our hope and prayer that you will find spiritual nourishment for your soul. Let us uh, continue in the spirit of worship. Live as children of light, for Christ's light shines upon you. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer? Merciful God, as we embrace this season of Lent, and as we prepare to walk again with Jesus to the cross, speak to us, we pray, the solemn truth of Christ's passion. Remind us that there is no life without death, no communion without separation, no glory without suffering. Give us courage and faith to receive these difficult truths and to align our hearts and lives with them. May we choose to lose our lives so that we may gain them, to endure the pain of separation that we may enjoy the fellowship of all of your saints, to enter into Christ's suffering by entering the suffering of the world, that we may one day share in your eternal glory. In this time of worship, enable us to hear what we need to hear. In Christ's name we very humbly pray, amen. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would God devote the sad and bead for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving only ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin with penitent hearts, then God who is faithful and forgiving will restore us into our broken relationships and also bring us closer to the divine self. In the spirit of penitence, I invite you to join me in a prayer of confession. O God of comfort and God of challenge, we come to you today the way the Israelites did, full of complaints and dissatisfaction. It seems that nothing is enough. We do not recognize your blessing at work in our day-to-day -day lives. Forgive us in our complaints. Challenge us as you did the people of old to consider the bigger picture of oppression, injustice, and inequality around us. Forgive us when we close our eyes for fear of what you might show us. Lift up loving and compassionate leaders to open our eyes until we see what you see in our world. All of these things we pray in the name of Jesus, 
whom we know to be the Christ. Amen. As we prepare to have Tiffany White share scripture lessons with us today, I invite you to join me in a prayer of illumination, asking for God to open our hearts and our minds to receive that word and that it might be faithfully proclaimed. Join me in this spirit of prayer. Holy Spirit, prepare us to hear from the scriptures. Sometimes it can be easy to dismiss a passage that seems familiar. We've heard it before and so we disengage. And yet we know that your word is powerful and that it is calling us to live like Jesus. Do not let us turn off our ears so quickly. Help us to listen well and to respond with obedience. Let us see what it is that you are doing through the scriptures that we hear today. You are working and we want to join you. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning. Today's first scripture lesson comes from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, when Jesus called the first disciples. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genseret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. And then our second reading this morning is also from the book of Luke. This is chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, Jesus and Zacchaeus. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost.
As we prepare to listen to God's word proclaimed, join me in the spirit of prayer. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable into your sight, and may those things said that are true be engraved upon every heart, and anything said that is false be quickly forgotten and cause no harm. Amen. Our text for today is from the 11th verse of the 5th chapter of Luke's Gospel, and they followed him. When God wants a, an important thing done in this world, or a wrong righted, God goes about it in a very singular way. God doesn't release thunderbolts from heaven or stir up earthquakes from below, but God simply has a tiny baby born, perhaps in a very humble home, perhaps of a very humble mother and father. And God puts an idea or purpose into the mother's heart and she puts it into the baby's mind, and then God waits. The great events of this world are not battles or elections or earthquakes or thunderbolts. The great events of this world are babies, for each child comes with the message of God that God is not yet discouraged with humanity, but is still expecting goodwill to become incarnate in each human life. I believe that God comes to us much more often than not in the everyday occurrences of our lives. That's the way it was with the patri patriarch Abram when he left his home and took the first steps at a journey that would last beyond his lifetime. It was the same experience that Moses had when he was minding his own business, attending his father-in-law's sheep, and saw a burning bush that was not consumed by the flame. And I believe that is how it is in your life as well as mine. I believe that God speaks to us in the circumstances of our lives, and that the problem is we just never seem to notice, or we have become too numb notice. It was a day like any other day when Peter, James, and John were cleaning their nets after an unsuccessful night of fishing. And just like any other ordinary day, when Zacchaeus heard that Jesus would be coming through the town of Jericho where he lived on his way to Jerusalem. Both the stories of Jesus calling the first disciples in Luke's gospel and the story of Zacchaeus are familiar to many, and perhaps even all of you. They were certainly familiar to the artist who created four reliefs that are on the hall to the left of the pulpit. When Jesus walked into the lives of Peter, James, and John, their world was forever changed. They put their nets aside and walked in the footsteps of the man from Galilee. And the same was true of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, a grifter, and probably an extortionist. And yet it seems that that wee little man of the children's Bible song was on Jesus' list of things to do as he made his way to Jerusalem. Zacchaeus, Jesus called up to Zacchaeus sitting in a tree, come down from there because I must dine in your house today. Shocked that Jesus would recognize him or know of him or even see him up in that tree, Zacchaeus scrambled down and shocked even more by having Jesus invite himself to dine with Zacchaeus to be accepted by Jesus. Zacchaeus responded by saying, I will give away half of my possessions to the poor. Zacchaeus, you see, was a very wealthy man. He had more than enough. And he continued, if I have defrauded anyone of anything, as a tax collector, he certainly would have defrauded many people. I will repay them four times as much as I have taken. He doubled the restitution that was required by law. 
Extravagant was his response to Jesus' call in his life. And in the earlier lesson, the one about Peter, James, and John, when Jesus called them to follow him and that he would make them fishers of men and women, they left everything behind, their nets and their father, and they embarked upon a journey, a new way of life that they never could have imagined. They could never return to the way things were. The common thread that is found in those two stories in the gospel is that when you notice, when you realize, when you understand that Jesus has come into your life, you are forever changed. And because you are forever changed, some small part of the world is also forever changed. That's how it was for a Pharisee's Pharisee, a Pharisee by the name of Saul, who was on his way to Damascus when his life was changed as the risen Lord, the Christ, broke into it. He became the Apostle Paul, the greatest evangelist of the early church. And late in his life, he wrote two or maybe three letters to a troubled church in the city of Corinth. And in one of those letters, he wrote about how Jesus Christ changes the direction of a person's life. The Apostle Paul wrote, If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation, for the old has passed away and the new has come. I truly believe with all of my heart that the church of Jesus Christ is the living body of the risen Lord in this world today. As the body of Christ, we are challenged, I believe as individuals and as congregations, to do the work of Jesus here and now. Every one of us and every congregation has a role to play. Now, not all of us or any of us have all the spiritual gifts, nor does any one congregation have all the spiritual gifts. But each one has enough of the gifts to do the work of the kingdom of God where they are. The world is hurting right now. There's a pandemic. COVID-19 has turned our worlds upside down. And it has exposed great inequalities in all of their horrid nakedness. We have found ourselves separated one from another. We have lost loved ones who have died alone. The list goes on and on. But even without COVID or a pandemic, we are finding ourselves in very changing times. For example, people who will be graduating from high school this year have a world much different than when I was growing up. For them, the first moon landing is essentially ancient history. No one has stepped on the moon since they were born. And Vietnam is something that they may read in history books or a war that they're grandparents fought in. 9-11 is also a historical event that occurred before they were even born. During their lifetime, the United States has always been at war in Afghanistan and Iraq. Cell phones have always been in existence and they have become the primary device upon which games are played. Shoes have always been removed when they went through security checks to board airplanes. And believe it or not, they have never had to write a check. It has been said that there are three kinds of people in this world. There are risk takers, caretakers, and undertakers. Risk takers are those who are willing to gamble on just about everything. Caretakers are those people who look out for others and generally play it safe, being risk averse and playing life very close to the vest. 
Undertakers are those individuals who do so little that they bury nearly everyone with whom they come in contact. In the world in which we live, Jesus calls us, those of us who decide to take Jesus seriously, calls us to be risk takers, to take a chance, to take a flyer, to leave behind our nets, to change our priorities by which we live. For Jesus once said that whoever wishes to save their life will lose it, but whoever is willing to lose their life for my sake and the gospel's will find it. Whoever is willing to risk everything for the kingdom of God will find the true meaning of life. The church, as in ages past, is called by God to be ambassadors of reconciliation, to be a light shining the light of God's love in a world that is too filled with darkness and despair, to be the physical embodiment of a grace that overcomes all of our divisions, and to be a source of peace that passes all human understanding, and to share the joy that brings hope to the hopeless. It seems to me that for too long, too many people who call themselves Christians or and too many congregations have settled into the comfort of complacency and the security of the sure thing. Like Demas, a person referred to in the second letter of Timothy, we have fallen in love with the world and have forsaken our first love. We have fallen in love with our institutions, with our bricks and our mortar, and have lost ourselves. But if there's a silver lining to the pandemic, it is that it has pushed us out of our comfort zones, leaving us with an ancient challenge, namely, to actually be the body of Christ in this world, here and now, not tomorrow, but now. The gospel tells us that we have been saved in order to serve. And having been saved to serve, we are challenged to move from survival to service, from conserving to serving. We are living in a new day and a new time. And the good news of the gospel is this. God has chosen us, you and me, for a time such as this. To God be the glory, both now and forevermore. Amen. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer? God of great love, take hold of our hearts and let us contemplate in the stillness of your presence our lives. Help us to be still and to discover the mystery of the living Christ within us. Inspire us to turn ourselves inside out in service of you. As we go about cleaning our homes, commuting to our work, toiling in our gardens, sitting at our desk, answering our emails, may we honor you. As we read to our children and grandchildren, as we greet our neighbors, as we jog or walk in the park, as we shop, may we honor you. At work and at play, take hold of our hearts, O God, and awaken us to the presence of your love in our lives. And may your love spill over into the lives of others in such a way that it lightens their path and eases the burdens of each and every person we meet. We pray this in the name of the one who came to be the light of the world and who called us to shine that light. 
the one who is love incarnate, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, who through forty days for us did fast and pray, teach us with you to mourn our sins and close by you to stay. Abide with us till when this life of suffering shall be past an easter of unending joy we may attain at last i charge each and every one of you to go out into this world into which we have been called and return no one evil for evil or reviling for reviling but learn how to love and forgive one another as freely as God in Christ has loved and forgiven each and every one of us. And may the love of God that will never let you go, the peace of Christ that passes all human understanding, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that knits us together as the body of Christ here on earth be with you today, tomorrow, and every day of your life. Amen. Thank you.